Hello, this is Nick Jarbo, and this is a demo of how to take data from a paper, process it into a single Excel file, and then upload it into Magic. This isn't a very rehearsed video, and I hope that helps show some of the stick points. And uh, here we go. So this is the paper I'm going to show you how to process. Uh, it's a recent paper and uh, this uh, this paper uh, doesn't have any tables with data in it but it does have a supplementary materials section luckily so I've downloaded this uh, I went here and uh, found the one uh, table that's relevant for this study uh, that we're going to do today um, and I'll open that up now and here it is so this table has two cores, uh, the study has two cores, um, and uh, they're, they have samples, they have uh, the depth sample names, the DI, MAD, and uh, one core has a corrected declination. So what I'm going to do is uh, convert this data into uh, the various tables that are needed to uh, be in your spreadsheet to upload into Magic. Now, there's a template file that you should see attached uh, on the help page, uh, and I'm going to open that up now. So, what I'll do is templates. So I'll copy this, go back to where this file was, copy it here, oops, paste it here. Interesting. Um, oops. Try that again. Copy this, paste it with the supplementary material for now. Change, change the name of this template file uh, to something reasonable. up. So on this file, what uh, we have here is this template file. Uh, I've changed the name and in it we have already set up uh, a bunch of workbooks uh, or a bunch of sheets in this workbook uh, that correspond to the tables in the Magic database. So we have uh, locations, sites, samples, specimens, measurements, criteria, ages, and images. Uh, criteria, ages, and images uh, are not yet set up with defaults. But uh, for the other tables, uh, what we have is uh, the dark uh, bolded text are required fields in the database. And then the unbolded are other columns. Uh, that uh, we've sort of highlighted as useful or commonly used. Um, and you can get all of, uh, all of the columns in each table on the online uh, data model, uh, which should also be linked in the help uh, blurb for this video. Um, so for location, uh, we all will look back at our data that we have here. So let's just process this a little bit as so you can see both at once so what a location is is can be a variety of different things it could be uh, I'll show you where uh, we have controlled vocabularies uh, for uh, the different location types and uh, if you go to the home page uh, there's a list of resources here so you can go to vocabulary lists um, and then if you look at location types, um, 
what these uh, could be are if we take each of these drill holes uh, and we can say that they're uh, either a drill site uh, or we could have it as a core um, I think we will choose for this uh, I think core is probably the best thing for this here so uh, for location type just type in core location so we're gonna have two locations we're gonna have this first core R M D one and uh, the second one R M D eight they're both cores so a lot of this information is gonna get duplicated so a class uh, I don't know what a class is you can look at either the data model or you can look at the list. Oh, and these names up here are the actual computer names, not these display names, because uh, uh, working with the computer names, that's really the column name, easier to work with, I think. Um, so I'm going to open up, go back to the home page. Oops. Uh, and now I'm going to go to the uh, data model. 3.0 locations and uh, so here it has a list of all the columns uh, in the table uh, geologic class so let's see geologic setting that makes more sense but uh, we're not going to change the column names so we now have it as a text called geologic setting and uh, so if we go to the vocabulary list geologic setting to be updated. All right, so these are the various classes. Uh, so in this paper, they're doing uh, cave limestones, I believe. So let's look at that. Um, flowstones millimeter samples so best description of this is sedimentary and sub aerial so go back here And the way you uh, you can add multiple ones, you put a colon in between them. Although, I mean, technically, this could be submarine because it's deposited under a film of water, but I think this is good. Uh, then lithologies, so, and you can change the widths of these columns. All that matters really is the header. I like to be able to see everything if I can. It's not too cramped. Um, then for this, mythologies. Here, there are a lot. So uh, what I think would be nice is if we have something called a flow stone. We don't. Uh, so... Um, if you find that you need to have something added to these uh, lists, uh, send me an email, njarbo at ucsd.edu, and we can add them right away. 
let's see what else would be so I will probably change that later but for now we'll just put uh, limestone maybe Dolomitic. Metal limestone. Let's just try. Let's just use limestone for now. Okay, limestone. Uh, now, this is the uh, geographic location. So, if you had a region, you'd have a box. Uh, if that was your location, since this is, should be at a very specific point. Uh, the north and south latitudes will be the same, and the east and west will be the same. And let's see if uh, hopefully they give that information somewhere here. Uh, here's the map. Geologic setting. So, you know, in this day and age of GPS, it would be nice to have uh, something that's much more specific than this, but uh, so somebody can go out in the field and relook. But for now, this is the location. So, uh, and we use decimal degrees. So, and uh, what I do is um, I'll show you how you can turn off columns later. But if you want to, you can just insert a column if you want to do some work here. And uh, I'll just put in insert two columns. Put in the latitude, or put in the degrees, put in the minutes. Um, it's going to be the north. Insert two more. Put in the degrees. East. All right, good. What do we, what do, we do east. Uh, so we go from 0 to 160, so we like the east ones. If it was west, then you'd have to manipulate it with 180 degrees. Um, but this is 7 degrees east. 9 minutes. Uh, and then we can just say this is going to equal this plus 42 divided by 60. same so I'll just copy and see this isn't right so undo edit copy paste special values only okay and do the same here yeah if you want a formula in Excel you don't know how to do it you press equals and then you can just write any formulas um, so I'm doing the same thing here so seven plus this box divided by 60. Okay, copy, edit, paste special values. Okay, uh, now the age of this thing. So every single location and every single site should have an age. Um, so we'll go back to the paper, try to figure that out. Um, Ten thousand year record. Where does it start? It's a little bigger. to 9.0 okay now what would be really nice is if they did the age model for us then we could uh, which is what they should do look here no age if you had an age in each one they'd already have the age model so uh, for look, we'll get to, we'll get to that when we when we start doing the uh, site level data because we want a, a different age for every single one of these little things. 
Um, but for now, we'll just put in the range that they say here for the location. 0 0.05 to 9. So if you have a single age with a sigma, like a radioactive age, uh, you can put that there. If you want low or high, then you can, if that's what you have, then you put that in here, 0 0.5, uh, 9.0. Uh, age unit K A. All right. Uh, country. Um, oh, oh. Italy. Continent or ocean, Europe, ocean or sea, well, it's not in the ocean, uh, method codes. Uh, so we can do an age method code. So uh, method codes are, we have a large number of method codes that describe the data. data. This is what people like to call metadata. Um, so I'll show you how you find that. So if you go back to the magic homepage. And we have method codes, so I'm going to put a geochronology method. And from the paper, I believe it is um, uranium thorium. So there's a lot of these. It's probably GMU. Uranium, thorium, helium, and I imagine it's uranium, thorium. Uh, it's going to be the uh, lead age. So we'll copy that, paste it in here. Sort of annoying, it'll probably work, but uh, let's paste special text. And if anybody knows how to make this the default, I'll give you 20 bucks. Send me an email. Okay. Um, citations. This is just the DOI of the paper itself. Uh, if there was a, an age, like if there was a, an age determined in a different paper, then you could put that there. So we'll just put the DOI. Copy that. Once again. Okay, uh, so we, want, we have two names. All this other information, I believe, is going to be the same. If we find out there's two different ages for the two cores on closer reading, we can change it later. So I'm just going to copy all this stuff and repeat it. So you do a Control D, it just fills everything down on your highlighted thing. Uh, and uh, there we go. Now we have the all the location information that we need for this magic upload. Next, sites. So this is where uh, the main uh, information is going to come from in this paper. Uh, we don't have a measurement. Uh, the specimens in the samples are pretty much the same as the site, usually in a core. So every single sample uh, is just going to be a site. A uh, site we define as a um, uh, a location or well, a site is where all of the uh, measured parameters that you're interested in are expected to be the same. So in a core, uh, if you're going through time, you're going to be changing a site for every single place you sample. In say a lava flow, you'd expect everything to be the same in a lava flow. So if you took eight or nine or ten samples, average them together you get a single site because the magnetic field, the age, and so on should be the same and can be averaged. 
So for this core, we're going to have all of these sites, all of these depths. So um, luckily, these sample names are different for each core. So we can just use the sample name as a site name. Uh, and uh, here are the things that are required here, lithology, lat longitude. So we just have, since a site should be a specific place, uh, in theory, it could have some dimension. Maybe we should add that, but uh, in this case, it doesn't. So uh, we're good. And uh, so the lithology, some of these you can copy just from the location level. So limestone we'll go for. Site. Uh, lithology. Uh, so site, uh, and so what I want to do is I'm going to have, I'm going to I'm going to copy this, all these, all this information. Since I'm going to and put it over here, so now I've got, and those all mat, all these columns match up. Sample, millimeters, deck, ink, mad. Sample, millimeters, deck, ink, mad. Then there's just one extra one for uh, this core. So now we've got all the samples lined up. Um, I'll just delete these so I don't get confused. All right. Uh, so first, the uh, sample name. Top is at 2.5 millimeters. It's a bit strange, but we'll use their convention. Uh, so I'm going to copy all of these sample names. And these are going to be the site names. OK, now for location, I'll make this a little taller so I can see it better. Make this a little smaller. Okay, so for location, we have two cores back here. First one is RMD1. So we just go over here. RMD1. Go down. Control D. Uh, the other location. RMD8, copy that. OK, now we've got the location for everything. Next, result type. So uh, result type, uh, it can either be a, an I, an individual result type, or an average result type. These are just individual. Sites uh, always be I unless say you had lava flows that were kilometers apart, then you could say it's an average. But uh, in general, these are always going to be I result type. Fill that in. If anybody knows how to move down to the last row in Excel that has data, that would be great. Let me know. Uh, result quality. So uh, you can record things that you throw out for whatever reason. So, But we're assuming all these are good. Uh, I'm just going to fill in a cross. Maybe some of these things are going to be the same. So uh, method codes. Um, let's see, what are some good method codes? We'll get the same age method code. And then uh, maybe we'll, these are drilled. So let's go back and see what some of these methods are here. Three millimeter thick slices. Okay. 
Um, go back here, go to the home page again, method codes, field sampling. So uh, this is coring, and they probably. Look through here. What they did for coring. Um, so here it says a drill using an electric powered drill. So Boring, drilling, here this. That's probably the best one. FSFD, field sampling field drilled. These are more for uh, large drill sites, uh, like an ODP ship or a well, a wellhead. So we'll put that. Orientation. Be interesting to see how they orientated these things. Like, how do you know? Is it magnetic? Uh, magnetic direction? Ah, here. See, this is this is not good to know. The first core was not azimuthally oriented. It was oriented by magnetic compass and inclinometer. Okay, so hmm, I'll have to see what we should do about the first one. I'm going to stop here and do some more thorough reading uh, to see what we should do about this um, unoriented core and see if they describe how they get these directions. Part two, soon.